Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be showing one of my favorite super niche uh, debugging techniques, uh, which is to use Tmux in kind of what I, what I like to call a hacker mode. Uh, and I've used this a couple of times on stream, but I used this a lot when I was upgrading Python versions at my previous employers. So when I did Python 2.6 to Python 2.7, in Yelp main at Yelp, as well as some Python 3 migrations at Yelp, and a whole ton of Python 3 migrations at Lyft. Uh, let me show you this really cool technique, and maybe you'll be able to use it to do stuff as well. Uh, so I have my keyboard uh, on screen today, so you can see the commands that I'm running, because uh, some of the keyboard shortcuts are going to be useful. Um, but let me just do a quick intro to Tmux before we jump into this. Tmux is a terminal multiplexer. There's another one that's called Screen, which is also pretty popular. Uh, I'm just going to show you the basics really quickly. So we're going to start up Tmux. And uh, Tmux usually has a bar at the bottom, which will show you like what tabs you have open. Uh, Tmux takes its own tabs. So, it, you know, this, these are normal terminal tabs, but Tmux has its own concept of tabs. We're not going to be using normal tabs today. And all of the commands that Tmux take uh, receive a leader key. And uh, the default leader key is control B. So you'll do control B followed by some command. So if I do control B C, that will create another tab. So you can see we have tab zero and tab one down here. Um, you can also switch tabs by using control B and then the number. So if I do control B zero, you'll see that the star switched from, from one to zero. If we go to control B one, um, we can go back to that. I believe control B D uh, will detach the session. So this will leave Tmux running in the background uh, and you can reattach to it later by using Tmux attach or Tmux A. Uh, as you can see, like you know, if we put something here and then detach from it and then reattach, you'll see that it, it keeps everything running in the background, which is kind of nice. Um, that's kind of the basics of Tmux. Uh, you can use it to do run running, run, long running processes and uh, you know, a, a nice way to not lose your work, or if you want to, you know, manage all of your tabs using keyboard shortcuts, Tmux is kind of a, a good tool for that. I tend to not use Tmux all that much, but uh, sometimes it's useful. I'm actually going to close out of that tab. Uh, today we're going to be working with this uh, little script here. Uh oh, forgot to cd into the directory. Uh, so I made kind of a contrived little script here, uh, which is going to do so. It, it has a bug in it, basically. But the bug is only there in Python 2. That's that's what I wanted to show you guys today. Um, so I'm going to show you how I would use Tmux to kind of step through this and show the bug. Um, the code actually isn't super important here. I already know the bug is on this line here. Um, but yeah, well, we'll show you how I might have figured that out. And you can assume that this is a much more complicated system. Um, in some places where I was using this debugging technique, I was, you know, spanning thousands of files and uh, really not having any idea where code was was changing. Um, so let's let's first show that they're broken. So if we do Python 2, t.py, uh, you'll see that we get this assertion error. That's that's the bug. That's what we want to fix. And if we do this with Python 3, you'll see that it you know gives us this OK message. Just kind of a, a silly example. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to split the Tmux panes. This is where the, the magic starts happening. So we're going to do Control B and then the dollar sign. Oh, no, that's not the right key. Oh, it's Control B and then percent. Yes, I remember how this actually works. Um, and so now we'll have two vertically split panes. And you can switch between the two panes by using Control B plus the arrow keys to switch between the two. Um, we actually want to CD this into the same directory that we were at so that I can show you this. And we want those two to line up. I use control L just to flip the screen up. And uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put a breakpoint in our little script. So if we open this up, uh, I'm just gonna put the breakpoint here after we do some argument parsing and see how this works. Oh, but we'll have to use old style breakpoints because I don't have future breakpoint installed in Python 2. PMBoard PDB, PDB, DB dot. <laughs> Man, it's been a while since I've done that. Okay, but this is one way that you can make a breakpoint in Python. And so now if we run this, I'm going to run Python 3 on the right-hand side. And I'm going to run Python 2 on the left-hand side. So you can see we kind of have like this parallel-looking thing here. Um, but I would have to manually flip back and forth to run both of them. But this is where the magic comes in. There is this um, special... Uh, so I did Control-B colon. Uh, there's this set w synchronize panes, 
which brings us into our nifty hacker mode. So now anything that I type into the debugger is being sent to both Python 2 and Python 3. So you can see like we're both sitting at line 20. Um, and the way that I used this technique when I was debugging Python 2 and Python 3 differences is I would just step through the code until one side was different from the other. And that's when I knew that my behavior had changed and I would have to change the code there. So in this case, let's just step into this. Uh, you can see that we're going into join. We really don't care about the implementation of join. So I'm going to do R, which is going to jump to the return of that. And so you'll see that uh, on the left hand side, well, there's already kind of a spoiler here. This little U is giving away the the bug on the left hand side, but you can see like they both return basically the same value. Um, so if we do step again, so now we're going to step into this validate string function. That's the one that actually contains the bug. So if we do step again, and this next step is going to be where they first differ. So you'll see here that uh, in the Python 2 side, we went to this raise assertion error, but in the Python 3 side, we returned s. And so then we know that the bug is on this particular, or, or the previous line where it, you know, branched differently. And I've used this technique to find, you know, <laughs> hundreds, maybe thousands of bugs in, in, uh, in migrations. And, you know, has been a very useful technique for me. But anyway, after that, you can either continue or whatever you want to do to, to exit this and you would go modify the code. Uh, now you will want to turn synchronized panes off because otherwise, you know, You'll open your text editor twice and, you know, all sorts of uh, hell will break loose and you probably don't want that. So to turn it off again, you can just do control B, oops, control B colon and run set W synchronize panes again. And so now, now they're no longer in sync and so you can go and fix your code. And in this case, we would probably use, you know, type Unicode Orster. <laughs> And um, I don't know, you would probably use six dot text type or six dot string types or whatever here if you were if you had access to six. Uh, but now you can see that if we do Python to t.py um, and we continue, you'll see that we get this OK message now in Python 2 as well. And that's how I'd go about fixing that code. Uh, but hopefully this technique was helpful. I've definitely used this a lot and uh, I think it's really cool to show it. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.